What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So we are done with the CB350 project. If you have not gone and looked at the overview video, I encourage you to do that. Uh, I really love how that bike turned out. Uh, now we are jumping back on the CB500 restoration because I want to wrap this bike up as quickly as possible. So off camera, I have done quite a bit of work uh, just because a lot of what I've done is stuff I've shown in the past. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on everything to get us to the point we are now, and then we'll see what else we can accomplish in this video. So as you can see, the bike looks a lot more complete than when we left it. So since the last time you guys have seen it, I pulled the front wheel off, replaced the tire. Uh, the front wheel bearings were in really good shape, buttery smooth, uh, no issues to report there. So we did keep those. The fork seals are in good shape, but I am still going to swap out this fork oil. It's really easy to just take this 10 mil off, drain them, uh, you know, pull the cap off, be able to fill them. You can do it on the bike if you're just swapping the oil. Um, we also went ahead and rebuilt the brake system as well. So I did a master cylinder rebuild and put a new seal in the caliper. Also gave it a nice coat of paint, so it looks really good. Did my uh, standard bleeding technique of filling it from the caliper up. We have a nice firm lever, so the brake system is completely operational now, uh, which is great. Anything else I did up the front? Let's see, basically just cleaned off the wheel, some steel wool, cleaned off the front fender, basically just getting the entire front end uh, wrapped up. Before I talk about this part, we'll talk about the rear wheel as well. So I took this off to put the new tire on. As you can see, these are uh, Shinko uh, 712s. Now that's the model. I'll throw a link to the uh, these tires in the description as well. They fit really well. They seem like they're gonna be really good options. When I took this rear wheel off, it did uh, have really bad uh, wheel bearings. I actually have the old bearings over here. And you won't be able to hear it, but this one is so gritty and it's just dry. You can see there's almost no grease in there. Uh, it was completely shot. So I did go ahead and replace those. I didn't bother doing like a how-to video because there are a ton of how-to videos on uh, CB you know, 350, 550 wheel bearings. If there's enough interest, uh, I can do a how-to next time, but I didn't find it necessary since there was already some good ones. I went with... Um, all balls, uh, their bearing kit. Well, here's a, a quick look at the part number. Um, they're sealed bearings as opposed to those older exposed ones so they don't let as much dirt uh, in the inside. And now we have a buttery smooth rear wheel. Uh, everything else back here is basically as it was. So let's move on to the engine. So the engine is exactly uh, how it is the last time you guys saw it, except for, of course, it is now in the bike. So I was able to uh, wrestle this in the bike by myself without uh, scratching the paint. And how I typically do that is I wrap a microfiber towel around the frame rail here and the frame rail here. You can unbolt the ignition switch, take off this top uh, breather cap, and then the engine can slide in from this direction. The 550s are significantly easier to get into the frames than the 750s are. The 750s barely fit and it's gotta be this perfect angle and the engines are so heavy. You know, this, I picked it up and put it in here uh, by myself. I did try and film it. Uh, I believe the camera literally shut off. I think the battery died like as I was placing it in the frame. So I can throw a quick time lapse of that now. Uh, but unfortunately, I think it's just gonna be me picking it up and carrying it. And since I had it kind of hanging halfway out of the frame, a little bit uh, precarious, I couldn't stop and swap the battery out on the camera. So that's my bad that we didn't get it all on film, but you can see that it is actually in the bike. So now that the engine is back in the frame, this thing is really gonna start to come back together uh, quickly. So I can start on things like the chain, which will allow me to finally mount this, the uh, starter cover, then we can go on to carbs and we can exhaust. I mean, there's still a lot of individual components, but since that heart is back in the frame, it's gonna be much easier for me to just kind of add on to it from there. I am currently soaking the insides of the tank with evapo rust, like I mentioned last time, to try and get just that last bit of rust out of the tank. So I'm letting it sit for probably 12 to 24 hours in this position, and we'll turn it, and over the next couple of days, I will kind of rotate it so that the evapo rust gets a chance to work on all the different surfaces on the inside of the gas tank. Uh, the last big thing I need to figure out is if this exhaust is gonna work for us or not. This is the kind of two into one setup that we used on the video where we got it running on the stand. They are uh, decently rusty, not rusted through. It's just a lot of this 
kind of surface rust on here, you can probably see. So I need to go through and really see if steel wool or maybe the uh, trick with aluminum foil will clean these up nice enough to where they're actually gonna work for us. If not, I need to go ahead and source another exhaust system, but I'm really hoping that that one works out for the obvious reason of I already have it. So it brings the, uh, the cost down quite a bit. Give you guys an update. We're kind of smashed over here because as you can see, I had to move the lifts to be able to pull my car in forward to be able to get my wife's car in uh, because we have some um, hail on the way apparently uh, here in Central Texas. So wanted to get the cars in as much as possible. So we're kind of forced to work over here in the corner, but um, I've made pretty good progress since uh, the last time you saw it. Got the chain and the chain guard on. I have the electronics pretty much all hooked up. Carbs are on intake and you know air box is on. I do have a new air filter on the way. Um, I didn't actually have one, so that'll be here next week. Uh, clutch is hooked up. The throttle cables are hooked up. Coils are back on. I mean, we're making really, really good progress. So what I need to do now is work on that exhaust a little bit and then put oil in it, put the battery in it, and start to you know double check all the electronics on the bike, make sure our starter switch works and kill switch and all that kind of stuff, go through and troubleshoot, make sure uh, all the systems are operational. And before the end of this video, I want this bike to run uh, in the frame. So that's gonna be the goal. I'm gonna continue uh, working. I'll bring you guys back here in a little bit when I make some more progress. Made some pretty good progress. You can see I have the exhaust on the bike. Uh, I'm still working on the best way to polish it because it does have some fine scratches in it and I would like it to be uh, just a little bit shinier. I've tried a couple of different polishing compounds. Uh, steel wool is definitely not aggressive enough. These compounds don't seem to be aggressive enough. So I gotta see if maybe I can get some 2000 grit sandpaper or something like that. I don't know, I'm gonna have to research a little bit and see what the best option is. Um, but I think this exhaust is gonna work out pretty well. It looks stock enough um, to be able to fit with the rest of the bike. So I am to the point now where I wanna throw the battery in, uh, turn the key and just start to check some of the electrical stuff. I have not uh, gotten the signals out of storage yet. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to check that, but I can start to check some things like, you know, the starter motor and just making sure that um, you know overall the electrical system seems pretty good if all that seems to check out um, I'll probably hook my auxiliary fuel tank up and we will see if this thing will fire up uh, in the bike Okay, I put the battery in and I went ahead and threw the jump box on there because that battery's been sitting for a while So I'm sure it's dead um, Turn this key So far so good, no magic smoke, no crazy noises. Our neutral light is on. Cool, um, let's see, headlight. Okay, headlights on, gauge lights are on, tail lights on, look for high beam, high beam works, high beam indicator is on, sweet. Hold your ears, we're going for the horn. Horn works. Everything seems to be pretty good. Brake light works. On both switches. <laughs> this is sweet. Um, can't try the signals yet. Let's see if it turns over. I did put oil in it. I'm gonna keep the ignition off. Sweet. What do you say we uh, hook up our auxiliary fuel tank and see if this thing will fire up? Set you guys up back here. It's on. The interior bowl should be full. I'm going to give it some Choke. I still don't have an air filter, but it should be fine. Key on. Ignition on.
properly. Looks like everything's plugged in. Keep diving in. I did confirm that it uh, is not getting spark, and I then started checking around. And you know, we have our 12 volts at the battery, but we do not have 12 volts at that black with a white wire at the coils. So, most likely, my guess is that there's some corrosion on the kill switch. That's not um, sending the power because basically half of this kill switch gets the standard 12 volt switched power and then it sends that power to the coil when it's in the center and then cuts the power when it's off to the side. So I'm assuming it's just not uh, making a good connection. So let's pull that uh, switch off and see if we can uh, find anything wrong in there. Sure enough, pull this switch off and there is our black and our black with a white that should be soldered to the underside of that switch and they are just completely broken off which is kind of strange would not have expected that so i am going to go ahead and pull off the rest of the switch um, just so i can pull that piece out and let's see if we can just re-solder them back on so i got it all taken apart this is the underside of the switch i'm working with and then these are the two wires I have to solder to it. I'm hoping I can just get enough to be able to hold it right about there, melt that existing solder, stick it to the wires, and then be able to just push this back in and replace the little C-clip that holds it. Uh, if not, I might have to put a little half inch extension on each one of these wires just to give me enough room to work. It's a super tight tolerance, and unfortunately, because that wire runs down through through the handlebar down into the headlight, it's really not easy for me to uh, pull up any slack. So, have the uh, soldering iron heating up. Wish me luck. Was able to get it soldered back together. Now, when we turn on our key, we have a kill switch that works. So I can button this back up, and then we will try Attempt number two to get it to run. All right, I got the uh, fan set up and everything, so hopefully we can get some decent ventilation. I don't plan on running it long, um, but I also don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning. Let's turn our key. Let's choke. Let's see how she do. <laughs> sink and I'll probably go back through some of the maintenance stuff and just double check you know all the 
valve adjustments and all that kind of stuff just to, to make sure she's up to 100%. Well, that's what I'm going to call it on this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, put this CB500 back together. I uh, still have some little quirks to work out. Obviously, a lot of finishing touches, uh, carb tuning, and that kind of stuff like I just mentioned. Uh, also, it looks like the oil filter that I use, the O-ring around the outside might be a little bit too small because that housing is still leaking oil uh, even with the new filter and new O-ring. So I'm going to replace it with a different brand, and we'll see if that fixes it. Um, then we'll go through the rest of the bike. I still need to finish the inside of that gas tank and get that ready to go back on. Also finished a little tear in the seat, but probably one more video and then this thing will be uh, on the road. So I am actually going to insure this bike and go and get it registered and everything in my name. Uh, so we can do like a moto vlog on it and do like a, a proper road ride. And then uh, I'll probably have it for sale after that. But I want to ride it just a little bit, uh, enjoy the hard work. Uh, we are about to transition onto another project, which I think you guys are going to be very interested in. Give you a quick sneak peek on it. It's going to be on this bike, but it's going to be a series that's way different uh, than what I've done before. Uh, so it should be pretty interesting. I will be doing a will it run on this bike uh, because I need to know if this uh, engine is in fact good in here uh, before we start that uh, new project. So be prepared to uh, see this guy uh, come apart and get put back together uh, on a pretty short timeline. So I'll give you more details on that when the time comes. Again, I appreciate you guys watching as always. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys soon.